All right, so I thought it'd be fun to try something out. I actually created a 3D model of an oven mitt and I'm selling that on Sketchfab. But what I wanted to do was see if I could scan, 3D scan this room right here, um, this kitchen, and actually bring a character in using that oven mitt inside of Unreal Engine. So I'm gonna take you through the process of doing that and we'll see what the results are. I'm not actually sure how all this is gonna turn out. So it could be a complete failure or it could be something kind of interesting. So what I'm gonna do is go in and I'm going to use an app on the iPad Pro called Polycam. And Polycam is a 3D scanning application. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use LiDAR to scan this area, map the textures to that, and then we will bring that into um, Unreal Engine, add a character, and all that fun stuff. So let's see how this whole thing works. All right, so I'm gonna start scanning here. I am really know I'm just gonna use one camera angle. So I'm just gonna try to capture just this corner of the kitchen here. I want the oven to be as accurate as possible since it's an oven mitt. I don't really need all this back here, but I'll do it. Okay, so just double check some of this and we'll stop. All right, so we've got our scan here and you can probably see that there. So I'm gonna texture this and we use um, high definition, HD and process. It says it's gonna take 29 seconds. Okay, so we have the processed file here. You can see some of the textures are wonky. They're a little blurred out here. Um, and it's okay, I guess. There's some issues there. You could probably try to clean this up a bit. Actually, what I'm gonna to try to do maybe is Add an additional scan onto this and see if we can pick up some of these um, key areas and we'll see what it does when I do that. So I'm going to do add the scan and just start to recognize the room again. Okay, so now it's got the, the new blue scan on top of the pre-existing green scan so let's HD process this again and see if it cleans any of that stuff up. If not, it's okay. We'll just use what we got here. This whole process is a learning experience anyway. Okay, so we're done here. We got, it looks like I picked up some more texture here. Um, I don't really need, and I got a little bit more definition of these bottles, but it's still kind of uh, still not that, you know, not crisp enough to use as a final like model for an animation, but I guess it gives you enough to test it out and, and see. Um, I kind of want to pick up the rest of this refrigerator though. So I'm going to do one more scan and see if I can just focus on the refrigerator. All right, last process. And then we'll move on. I don't want to overthink this whole thing. It should be fun. <laughs> we'll see how long it takes me to do this. Okay, so ah, see, it looks it looks like it it striked out a full um, section of cabinets there. Let's go back to the library and see if one of the previous scans has the cabinet. So this one has the cabinet. So I want to do it for a test. Is I'm going to try to combine these two scans in Blender. Um, that might be the approach. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Now that we've scanned everything, we want to export this. So I'm going to export as a DAE file. So click that and just basically email that file to yourself. Once you have that, you can import that into 
Blender and start assigning the materials that are exported with that to the actual model. I'm gonna turn down specular and I'm gonna turn up the roughness a bit on each of these um, models. Now I'm just gonna clean up a little bit of these vertices, um, put in x-ray mode, select these and just X and vertices, delete those. All right, so now we're going to export this as an FBX as a mesh, and we've got our XB FBX there. So we'll go to a new folder inside Unreal Engine, import, find that FBX, import that. Look at all these settings, create new materials is good, and we'll do import all. Okay, so we have our object, we'll bring that in and I need to flatten out the ground around this. So I'll do that. Then we'll zoom in here and you can see there's a bunch of it. So I'm just using a little sample file here. So I'm gonna raise it above the grass real quickly. And now we can see inside our kitchen space here. So it's already looking kinda interesting. You can see there's some defects in the scan, but for pre -vis, this is pretty useful. So now I wanna add an iClone character. So I've got my, um, after I fix some of this camera stuff. So I'm gonna take, find the light source and adjust that down a bit since it's an interior scene. I'm gonna open Character Creator and add my oven mitt that uh, is on Sketchfab and transfer weights of that mitt to the character's hands and assign it as a glove and say apply. Okay, so now I'm gonna, just so I don't have any interference with the fingers poking through the glove, I'm just gonna go ahead and just uh, hide that mesh and then export this to iClone. Add an animation to it. And we have a person laughing and uh, joking around with their oven mitt on. Okay, so now we're gonna go to iClone, our uh, Unreal Engine, and import this iClone origin. I've already got one in this model but um, I'm gonna move it down into position here. Basically just have it right on the floor. Okay, so now I want to enable the shader, do a high quality shader and set up my live link. Okay, go back to iClone, turn some of the camera and lights off because I don't want to transfer those over. And I got my character and we'll do transfer file. This usually takes quite a long time, but I've sped it up here. So now we've got our file, our lady is in here and when you link activate you can see that she's starting to perform the motion that is showing up in iClone live into uh, directly into Unreal Engine okay so you can play this and she's moving all around and it looks like it's good so iClone records stuff in 60 frames per second so we're gonna have to adjust that once we get a couple lights in here just uh, Put these lights in. You can see they're throwing previews on the shadows. So we're gonna change all these lights to movable so they're rendering in real time. All right, so we've done that. The preview goes away. Now we've got our character. She's casting shadows on the wall. You can see back behind there. Um, and all this is done in real time, obviously. So I'm gonna start to record a sequence. I'm gonna add the iClone origin. I'm gonna add the character. And I added in this sequence the camera, but I didn't really need to. Um, so I'm gonna go down to the settings here and I'm going to change the sample rate to 60. I'm gonna change the length to zero. I'm gonna turn this stuff off. Okay, so we'll press record, it'll give us a countdown, and we'll go over to iClone, and we will hit play. All right, cool, once this runs through, all right, stop, and we'll do stop on Unreal, and open up the sequence here. So now we've got our character animated inside this uh, 3D scan. So I'm gonna set the endpoint, just move that to where you want it, right click, set endpoint, and right click and say endpoint. Okay, so when you do this, you're gonna see double. The iClone that's in the sequence has a lightning bolt in the um, world outliner. You'll see like a double. So we wanna go in and turn off the original character that we were 
sending from iClone. And now we've just got the recorded version here. You can see some problems with her shirt and uh, her skin, but we'll add a camera to this sequence. Because I didn't like the one that I brought in previously. We'll add some start and end keyframes. And then I'm just gonna do like a little pan on this. Something super simple. So this is some of the previous work you could do if you had like if you were setting up something and you wanted a particular camera shot with a particular action, um, and then we'll render this out. So I'm gonna choose a video sequence, AVI, and I'm gonna set it to 4K image so we can scale it down to 1080. Um, all these other settings. I've noticed problems if I do cinematic target scalability. So I turn that off. It gets real jumpy and, and weird if I and shadows disappear and all kinds of weird stuff happen. So I'm gonna uh, under animation. I'm gonna set the custom start time to our new one we set and the end time as well. And I'm gonna give it a little startup run frame count of 30. And we'll do capture movie. I'm just gonna let this play through as it captures to show you how fast something, uh, a little sequence like this can actually render. Right now it's going through um, those 30 frames and you can see already that what we didn't have previously was hair motion. Um, now we're getting motion in her ponytail. Um, quite a bit of motion actually and it's uh, because she's jumping all around and throwing her head and stuff. It's, it's uh, going all crazy all over the place so you want to I guess be wary of what your hair on your character how much all that stuff is moving around you probably adjust all that sensitivity inside of the skeletal physics um, area of Unreal Engine to maybe downplay some of that okay so it's done and just uh, save this and here's the animation we recorded so we took a 3D scan of this kitchen, put a character in it, added some prop to that character, sent it to iClone from Character Creator, and then into Unreal Engine, and recorded a short animation in almost what feels like no time. So um, you can see that this is going to be a huge evolution of um, previs, this whole LiDAR technology and it's really super exciting so if you want to see more about this stuff so just subscribe and uh, like the video if you enjoyed it thanks